Hello everyone and welcome to FAM Sports Varsity Football Breakdown for this week's semifinal games. This is our Section 1B video and, you know, we're back in the lab, you know, studying football, although our projector pretty much just died on us. So the lab is kind of broken down a little bit, but we want to welcome you all to our video. Um, we're going to break down this week's Class 1B semifinal games. Um, I'm your host, Frank Langella. This is my co-host, Marsilio Langella. And, you know, let's just dive right into it. Class B is another interesting class. Um, we're going to go into the different teams and different matchups, talk about these teams a little bit. And let's start with number three, Pearl River, who's five and three at number two, Byram Hills. And both these teams played each other in week three, which was a couple, which is a while ago, but Byram Hills won 32 to 13. So these teams are different. Okay. Um, I think Pearl River's better. Um, as a unit. And these two teams, if you look back in their history, it, it's been a battle. I mean, Byram Hills is 5-4 and four against Pearl River in the last nine meetings. So you can see this has been an even matchup through its history. But for this year, Byram Hills, I always thought, you know, before the season, I picked them to win it all in 1B. And they're a really tough team. But Pearl River, who obviously we know about the tragedy they had in their program. And the coaching staff of Pearl River deserves so much credit for bringing the team together. And usually during these type of tragedies, before we get into the football aspect of it, you know, one or two things can happen. They can all come together or they can fall apart from, from the tragedy. And most of the time, and it's sad to say, people usually fall apart from that tragedy. But... You know, they came together and they won a huge playoff game in impressive fashion. And the kids and the coaching staff deserves a lot of credit for being able to do that. So they deserve kudos right away. Um, but getting into their team, they got a heck of a team too. I mean, offensively, 24.9 points a game, which was fourth and 1B. And they have, they have playmakers. And there's one kid who I really liked who was a Frank's finest, Logan Flaherty who, number 81, who is one of the more dynamic players in 1B, in my opinion. He's not a flashy player, but he really does a lot of different things, which I like. I like those guys who who can do a lot of different things at a high level, and he's one of those kids. I mean, he plays wide receiver. They'll put him in at the quarterback spot, play a little wildcat quarterback. He threw a touchdown last week on a, on a reverse pass. So, you know, this kid, you know, he's got the tools I really love these kind of players who do a little bit of everything for you. Um, he has six touchdowns this year of receiving. Um, but he's not the only one. There's another kid who I really like. Pro River's got these grinders to them. And that's why they're, they're real. If you watch them play, they are a lovable team because they got a kids who can just who can just grind for you. And another kid, number 17, Matt Villaboy. Uh, Villaboy, I think. And... Uh, He's one of my favorite players to watch. He's another short kid who, he's like a Julian Edelman in the slot. and uh, But they'll put him in the backfield and he'll run behind. It's hard to see him when he's running behind the big offensive line. So, you know, these are another one of my ki kids that I, I like watching to play. Luke Catalanato is another kid. He's got three touchdowns rushing, 450 yards um, rushing as well. You know, and I forgot to mention that Villeboy has 471 yards rushing okay so you're seeing production on all three of these players they are three of their most highly productive players and up front um pro river has a solid offensive line okay so that offense you know they can move you they can throw on you you know they do love to run the ball and they love to put a couple different guys back there who can run the ball and so you know they have the firepower to do it and uh you know about pro river mars i mean they're a, definitely a feel-good story. You know, they were in A, they got moved down to B, and they've been an impressive team even though despite the tragedy that happened to them. Yeah, I, I feel like um, when a tragedy like this happens, it really shows the character of the team and the coaching staff and the, the town itself. And, and being able to have a big victory like they did shows the character that they have. And I think that they will continue to, to show that um, all the way behind these players that, that – that are, are their skill guys that really kind of drive the force along. And they have a, a good offensive line um, on top of that, which makes them a force, makes them a, a Cinderella team, really. It shows that, that they're not going to 
you know, let the tr this tragedy bring them down. It's really going to going to unite them. Yep, absolutely. And they're playing in Byram Hills, who I think is one of the best teams in, in B. I picked them before the season to win it all against Ardsley. I think they've shown consistently they're the second best team in 1B. Um, their defense has been talented. I mean, 14.1 points a game, which is second in 1B. They also have a lot of playmakers. Okay, so this this Byron Hills defense, they have size, which I really like. They are a big team in 1B, right? So in the B class, they have they have a physical presence about them, and and that's also at all three levels. Okay, so they're, they're big. Okay, they're big compared to some of these other B teams, and they show it. They, they show their strength. Um, but they're not slow either. But, you know, what really catches your eye is the strength of these guys at all three phases, and they can really... It's hard to move these guys. So you're going to have to use those skill guys. You're going to have to use some trick plays to get around them. Um, but Pro River knows what Byron Hills brings, right? They've played them plenty of times, you know, and it's been a good back and forth between the two of them. Um, so we'll see about that aspect. But let's go to the other side, Mars. Byron Hills offense, and this is an offense that is, you know, it's it's very good. 28.9 points a game, which is ranked number two in 1B. They get one of my favorite backs back, which is Matt Wheeler. The big back who can run by you and he can darn sure run over you um, back from injury. And he is back, which brings a whole different dynamic to this offense. Okay, now Jack Tillinger did a very good job when Wyler was out. Um, and it's not that they're not going to use him because now they can bring two backs in the backfield, which, again, they can bring a deuce look. They can, you know, they can run with Tillinger. They can run with Wheeler. But Wheeler brings a, a special dynamic to him. A lot of defenses really have to be aware of this kid because he can really break open a game for you. Um, and it really opens the passing game because their quarterback, Nick Pika, is really he was really carrying a lot of pressure this season. And he was carrying the load very, really well, especially when their running back went down. Um, he was using his legs. He was throwing the ball. But now having Wheeler back is going to make things easier for him who has already been impressive this season so you can imagine the dynamic now it sets up and another kid that really impressed me is their tight end slash wide receiver franco who big strong kid i mean this is a kid who he's a real tough cover for dbs i mean who do you put on he's too big for some of these dbs and he does a really good job in the passing game so now you have a run game who's been solidified now with two really good backs and now it's going to take the pressure off their quarterback, who has been throwing the ball well. No, I mean, like you said, they're probably the most skilled team in this entire section, um, in Section 1B. Maybe not more than Ardsley, but we'll get into them. Well, we'll get into that. I mean, you, listen, you favor them for a reason. Right? I do, um, yeah. Uh, I think they have a lot of weapons, and when their best guy, Wheeler, is coming back, it's only going to add to that, that repertoire, that, that, that cabinet, right, of all these dudes that you, you just mentioned that – are can, that, that can kill you, you know, and that and that's a scary thing to see. If you're a defensive coach, you're gonna say, "How am I gonna stop all these guys? Do I have enough guys that can limit him? Can I have? A, do I have a secondary that can limit this guy?" And that's a problem, right? Yeah. And what's, let's just say you don't have enough players to stop it, then that's bad news for you. It is, and now we go to Pro Rivers defense, right? Um, what what is Byron Hills gonna do? They're gonna, I think they're gonna mix it up because they can, and. You know, but I do think they're going to start handing the ball off a little bit more, and it's because that kid is so special and it really opens up everybody else, especially play action. And it's going to be up to Pearl River to slow down this kid who finally has come back, the run game, Matt Wheeler. And um, Liam Fitzpatrick is a kid who's on the edge, who does a lot of good things for them. Uh, he's an impressive kid on defense. You know, the defense as a whole, 15.1 points a game, which is fourth in 1B. They do have a good defense. It's not, you know, it's no slouch. Let's just say that. Um, but Pearl River, this is going to be another group effort. Now, I mentioned one kid, but this is really going to be a group effort because they got to, you know, they got to get Byram Hills behind the sticks. I, I think if you put them in bad situations, I think that's when you're going to have the most success. And every coach says this. Every analyst says that. But you really need to make it, you know, an all-out effort to stop the running game because if if they're running, you know, zone and they're running power and this kid is just wearing on you, you know, it's going to be tough sledding, okay? It's going to be tough sledding. I know that a lot of people may think to bail out to stop Franco, stop the passing game from Pika, but 
you know, the easiest thing to do is turn around and hand the ball off to a running back, and they have one of the best in the business at doing it. So I think you got to stop. You know, there's diff- two phases. you got running game and passing game. The running game and for Byron Hills is going to set up that passing game, so you really need to stop the run game in my opinion. Um, do they have enough to do it? I'm not sure, but it's got to be a group effort. Yeah, I mean, like you said, now you have two backs that you have to worry about, right? Wheeler comes back, and you even had his replacement that – basically was having a very good and He was production. having success too. Yeah. yeah, Tellinger did a good job. Yeah, exactly. So now it's really going to be, can you limit the production of those two guys together? And yep. I, now having them both in, like you said, if you're an offensive line, you're saying, well, now I can have both these guys on the field at the same time, and now I can pick and you choose. You can mix which, it up. Yeah, which, you know, pick your poison, right? Who, who's going to hurt you? And and, that, and that's that's tough. That's just tough to stop. Yeah, let's go to our prediction. Um, I'll start where I think Byron Hills wins. I think the... Cinderella story comes to an end for Pearl River, who had a good season. And, you know, they, nothing should be taken away from them. But Byram Hills, I believe, is the better, more complete team. They have too many guys. Um, I think Byram Hills, you know, it won't be the 32-13 to 13 game that they played earlier this year. But I think they do win by a touchdown or two. So I think they do win handily. But, um, you know, touchdowns on hand, touchdowns a close game. But I think they win by a two-score game. I'm going Byron Hills. Um, I think I'm going to go Byron Hills as well. I think Pearl River keeps it close, though. I don't think it's going to be uh, you know, a big loss. I think they're going to try to play as, as inspired as possible mm-hmm. with how, how tough it was the season with the tragedy, and it's going to inspire them to try to make the game as close as possible, I think, but they lose in the end. And even if they lose, you know, they deserve a lot of credit for the season that Pearl River has had. Uh, let's go to our other game, right? The number four, Westlake, five and three, at number one, Ardsley, who's on a crazy winning streak. Okay, Ardsley, they played each other two weeks ago, Westlake and Ardsley, and Ardsley won 21 to 10. Um, Ardsley has won three straight versus Westlake. Okay, but this has been another rivalry that has been back and forth. They're five and six in the last 11 meetings. So even though they won three straight, they're five and six in their last eleven meetings versus Westlake. So Westlake history, they've had success against Ardsley, and of course they have because you know in one B they've been a prominent program. So they've had a lot of back and forth between these two teams. But Ardsley is the big dog this year, and they've been on a crazy winning streak. Let's start. You know, it's really can Westlake Ardsley's kind of reminds me of Nurshell Light. Okay, and that, that's not to disrespect Ardsley because they've been a really great program, but. Ardsley these last two years have really shown like they are the dominant force in B and it there's no different this year it really isn't but can Westlake pull the upset off we're gonna see let's dive into Westlake's offense 20.6 points a game ranked sixth they have a rushing attack that is dynamic they don't score a lot of points right based on the teams that are remaining but guys like Osiello, Sardo, Nick Martinez, they've combined for that that three-headed rushing attack combined for 1,500 total yards and 14 touchdowns. Okay, so that's a lot of production. Those three guys are the guys who lead the way for Westlake, and they're going to need to have a big game. you got to be able to run the ball on Ardsley. Um, for a lot of reasons, I mean, number one, that's Westlake's identity. So you got to be able to run the ball. You, you don't want to do something that you don't want to do, which is throw the ball a lot. So you want to run the ball. And number two, you know, Arsley has a strong offense. you got to be able to keep them off the field, and that's by running the football. That's by running the football, shortening the game. No, yeah, I think, uh, you know, Arsley is just, they have so many, you know, it's just a, a great talented, team. Yeah, just such a, such a talented team. Yeah, they're, um, and like you said, having all this different rush, rush attack, Basically, what combined for what you said, 1,500? 1,500 total yards, 14 touchdowns combined. Yeah, that's just, you know, that's a very rare thing to find in in high school football, right? And to have multiple guys being able to do that for you is, like we talk about, for even other sections, it's deadly, right? There's a reason why they're the top dog for a reason, right? There's a reason why they have this massive winning streak for a reason. Well, Ardsley does. Yeah, Westlake Westlake has the three-headed monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm trying to say is that um, that's what's scary about Ardsley is that they have – this loaded squad and it's really difficult yep. to really stop them yep and we go so that's Westlake's offense let's talk about Ardsley's defense mm-hmm. okay 9.3 points a game they're number one um and they're in 1b averaging less than 10 points a game is really impressive last week against Putt Valley 
They only allowed six first downs in the entire game. It's that's what you call a shutdown, okay? And they're extremely impressive. I, again, I can give you a list of names on these kids who who are good. They're great up front. We've talked about this numer. I've talked about this numerous weeks. We talked about it last week, um, and they're just such a well-oiled machine. They're so disruptive up front, which opens up things for their linebackers, which opens up things for their secondary to make plays. Okay, they get after the quarterback with that front. So if you try, you know, if you're you're not careful with this front, they can absolutely blow open this game. And I think that there is not an offensive line outside of Byron Hills that matches up well against this Ardsley's defensive front. And I think they're going to it's going to be tough sledding because Westlake likes to run the ball, but you're going up against a defense that is dynamic up front. And I don't know if this matchup's a good matchup for Westlake. Now, they're going to test it. They have to. But Arsley up front, running against that one, good luck, man. Good luck. No, yeah, I think, I mean, listen, I, you know me. I love I love me some trench warfare, and the front seven of Arsley is, is dominant. And uh, that's a really bad recipe for, for success for Westlake because that's their goal is to run the ball, and you're not going to be able to run it against these it's guys. It's going to be tough. Yeah, and, I mean, just like you said, in general, Arsley's defense is just a well-oiled machine. Whether it's they, they they can just kill you up front or they'll just kill you from the secondary because of how well the up front guys are playing. Yep, it allows um, every it makes everyone better on that defense. Yeah, so I mean I I really can't I really can't find the weakness that really takes away Ar- Arsley's you know power, like defense. I really don't know. It is, but I tell you what, that's what I love about football. Things can change in a in a second, but you know that rushing tax is gonna have some tough sledding. Let's go the other way, Mars. Arsley's offense averaging thirty points a game which is also number one in 1B. Um, you know, I can go through again. It starts with J- Jalen Osborne, um, who's just so dynamic. He really is. And it's it's amazing because you've seen in other sections running backs get so much praise for the good season that they're having that you forget about Jalen because ours has been so dominant that he kind of goes under the radar on how good of a season he's having. And he's had a great season. And he really is a special player. He's one of those home run hitters that I like to describe as running backs who when he gets a little bit of space, it's see you later, right? So he can take it to the house at any moment, and that's receiving the ball and running the ball. And against a good offensive line, right, it's the same kids playing both fronts. You know, he's he's set up to be successful. But they're not the only one. He's not the only one. You know, I, I butchered this quarterback's name last week, so I'm going to try not to do it again, but Luke Mantini, um, He's another. He's a kid who's been impressive as well. So you know you have a good complement to the run game with the quarterback play that they had by Luke and Preston Watchell. Um, he he's another. He's a he's a solid target. So you got you know you got different players who can make different plays at different moments, and Ardsley has all three phases covered. You know it's there's a reason why they're number one on both sides of the ball. Yeah, as I said before, there's a reason why they're the top top dog. Really, they, their their offense is just. Just like the defense, I will old machine. Yeah. Right. And and you have so many different weapons, but the more importantly, your offensive line is going to be dominant up front because it's the same dudes that are on defensive <laughs> line. So the just just all out men on the offensive line. They are. They D-line. got some big boys up front. Yeah. And and that's really what sets them apart compared to the most teams. Yeah. Is that they have they have the skill positions to kill you, but it's really the offensive and defensive line that's really going to set them apart. It is. And let's talk about Westlake's defense, who is no slouch. I mean, sixteen points a game defensively. They're another team that has a toughness about them. They're they're a bunch of grinders, just like Pearl River we mentioned before. You know, this Westlake team is a tough group. You know, you, you never really knew what you were going to get. You know, could Westlake make a run into the playoffs? But each week they played, you know, there's sometimes that it feel like they'd struggle to score, but what was always seemed to be there was their defense. And their defense has been solid all year round. And they really... They take the best thing that you do and they make it tough on you, okay? So they're trying to get you to do something different. And if you're trying to just run the ball at them, they're tough to just move off the ball. They got kids who aren't overly big, aren't, you know, they're not imposing figures, but they seem to just make plays. And that's why this Westlake defense has been solid. Now, can it go up against a high-powered machine like Arsley? Well, they played him tough two weeks ago, right? It wasn't easy for Arsley to move the ball. But the big test, I think, Westlake's defense does a lot of good things but can that offense make enough plays for them and that's going to be the question are they going to start to wear down 
Yeah, I I can definitely agree with that. I feel like Arley, Ardley's defense is really what sets them apart in all these different teams in the section. And I, I think that, you know what, the defense is really what's going to shut down Westlake. It's not going to be Westlake's defense not doing their job. I feel like the Westlake's defense will do well to a certain extent, but they just won't be able to score points. Yeah, and let's get to the prediction. We kind of previewed a little bit of what we're going. I mean, I'm going Ardsley. I think you're going Ardsley as well. Yeah, I, um, I think it's going to be Ardsley, Byron Hills in the championship game, and we'll get into that game next week. But Ardsley, I think, is the best team, and if they play to who they are, I think they win. And then, you know, Westlake is a tough team. I think they've, you know, they do they do some good things that I I like. You got to be able to run the ball and play defense, and they do both well. But Ardsley is a different beast. Yeah, I think it's really the defense that that's that would scare me if I was playing against them. I think like the the old mantra goes, defense wins championships, and def this this defense is just going to win this game. I think that's yeah. really this, how simple it's going to be. And Arsley has top offense and top defense. That it's it's tough to see him losing right now. Yeah, I agree. All right, everyone, that was our show. We appreciate everyone tuning into it. We hope you guys enjoy this weekend's games. Let us know who you think is going to win these semifinal games. We're going to see you next week when we do our final show of the year for football, giving our year in review. Guys, have a great night.